Hey, welcome to the Full Crawl family. My name is Gary. This is Hi, I'm Summer. All right, and so today's video, we're gonna we're gonna try to address something that a lot of you watching this, it's a problem that you have. Uh, and I know it's a problem I have that I wanted to figure out an answer to, and hopefully that's what we're here to do because I couldn't find the answer, so we're gonna find the answer together. And the problem is is that you went out and bought one of these. And then after that, you wanted to listen to music or you wanted to talk to somebody else, uh, whether it be you know somebody riding with you or somebody on another motorcycle, and you also realized. <laughs> All right, so then what we did is we went out and we bought some of these systems, right? So the, we're trying to talk to people and the speakers in there, because of all of that road noise, all right, you can't hear comms, you can't hear anybody talk, you can't hear the music. So what we usually do is we try to go out and buy bigger speakers, which I bought this specific set because they came out the the largest JBL speakers possible. So here's the problem. We have road noise and wind noise that is making you slowly go deaf, but we can't hear our comms and we can't hear our music. So what do we do? We try to make those louder. We put speakers right up to our ears and we make them louder to overcome, you know, that uh, that wind and rose noise. So you're just making yourself double deaf. Double deaf, right? Double deaf. D double deaf. And you know, my problem is I'm already deaf, right? Especially there's a certain frequency of voice, especially that I cannot hear uh, almost at all. So, especially my frequency. So, don't you think, Summer? Yes. And one of the solutions to preserving your hearing from all of that wind noise is wearing earplugs while you ride. The problem with that is this. All right, you still can't hear your comms or your music, uh, but you are preserving your hearing. But we wanna find a solution for all the above. So then I started looking at earbuds. All right, earbuds to me are probably the right answer for that. And, ear, and wired earbuds that we can plug into our comm system where I can hear really well as far as music and those communications, but also still preserving our hearing. So to me, it was the best of both worlds. And one of the things, you know, a lot of people will say, they're concerned about losing situational awareness with earplugs or earbuds. Folks, you're not, you're very unlikely to hear a threat to you, right? You're, you're not hearing somebody pull out in front of you. You're not hearing somebody run into you from behind. Those are not really, that's not really an issue. And if we think about it, cars are almost soundproof. We don't hear a lot from there to begin with. So to me, that's not a big concern, but you know, make sure that uh, you make the decision on your own and you know, full disclaimer, don't listen to me, I'm not a lawyer, all the other good stuff. Uh, she never listens to me. The next problem that I ran to is as I'm researching the different earbuds that are perfect for motorcycle riding and perfect for plugging in the comms, uh, is you run into all these different ones that people suggest. And those same ones that they suggest, you know, you'll see a suggestion or a good review on this Amazon for these, but you know, two reviews later, they say it's terrible. So what I wanted to do is assess everything that I could find that had good reviews. And that way we could kind of test them out and both Summer and I test these out so that, you know, we have uh, a little bit more of a diverse opinion on these. One of the factors is definitely gonna be the, the actual flanges that go into your ear. So you can have a really good earbud that works well, but if the flange is either uncomfortable or doesn't seal well, then... So to level the playing field, what we're gonna do is use these comply tips, uh, you know, that way it should eliminate that variable of, you know, a good earbud with a bad ear tip, so... Hey Gary, yeah. how much did all this cost? Oh, all of this? Yeah. Yeah, 30, 40 bucks. <laughs> sure. 30, sure. 40 bucks. Something like that. Third, maybe, maybe 50 bucks. So what I want to do real quick is just very quickly go through, unbox these, to show you what they come with. Uh, and then what we're going to do, check this out. Summer came up with this. Will you explain this to, to everybody? All right, this is very scientific. Uh, obviously. Uh, Let's see spent, what kind of gl glare we got going on here. Here, I'll hold this. this. I'll hold this. Spent hours making this, obviously. This makes me look better. <laughs> yeah, very much so. But um, here we have each model of earbud that we're going to try out and we have decided what categories we're going to rate each of them in those categories <laughs> so yeah what we're going to do and we're each going to give a rating for this so um and then at the end of that we'll kind of give a collective score for each model um and again it'll be and this is completely scientific subjectively subjectively <laughs> scientific so anyways all right so that's what we're going to do so what i want to do before we get started with that is we are just going to do a real quick unboxing of all these um, and kind of go through this so that you know exactly what you're getting in for the price point. All right, so the first one we got up is the M6 Pros. Oh, it has a nice case with it. It does have a nice case. All right, so we got the earbuds themselves. We got the fairly good length of cord here. Got some different, oh, it has actually has some adapters in here from a 3.5 to a quarter inch 
TRS cable adapter. Uh, some different size ear tips. Oh, geez, a bunch of different different ear tips. So that's that's pretty cool. And then you do have just an, a spare cord on here. So that's that's pretty cool. So pretty neat there. Good good value there. All right, the next one we have here is the Sophia. Got a uh, I don't know mediocre little case. <laughs> Got uh, several different tips and a clip. Got the wire themselves. Um, that wire looks like pretty good quality. S same with the uh, M6s. Those, the wire felt very, very durable, but we'll see. So that's what you get there. All right, next one. The next one I saw a lot of good reviews on were the KZ ES4s. Uh, I don't remember the exact brand or whatever else. All right, you open this up, you got your left and right earbud there. The cord is separate. We have a cord right there that connects into with the TRRS. So this is the cord that connects, it connects to the earbuds themselves. And this is actually a TRRS connector. So this, uh, we may need an adapter before we'll even work with that, but we'll, we'll figure that out in a minute. So that's what you get with the ES4s. All right, here are Shure 215s. There was a lot of good reviews on these. I think these have been around for a while. Um, and there's a lot of motorcyclists out there that seem to really like these. So I'm, I'm curious to see what these are like. And, and some of these other models were kind of, are kind of considered the off-brand Amazon version of these because they're very similar in construction. So there again, we have a bunch of different size ear tips. And as we open this up, we have, which is kind of cool, we have our clear earbuds and they do have these disconnect. And so if this cord, which, you know, the cord is actually the, the, the piece that people end up breaking and tearing up. So on all of these types, you know, you can basically replace the cord uh, because the other ones are, are kind of like a, uh, I don't know, off-brand or maybe even a counterfeit version of these, if you will. Uh, what I do like about these right off the bat is these do have a very nice uh, ear tip. I can tell they have a, a memory foam, almost kind of like the Comply ear tips, but this ear tip actually looks actually a better quality than the, uh, the Complies. So, um, and then there again, you have some additional, um, memory phone ear tips in there as well. So you have the kind of the rubber flange ones as well as additional ones in there. Curious to listen to those. I think that'll be a pretty good option. Uh, the next one is the ZS10 Pros. These were basically, from what I understand and I can see online, these were basically the upgraded version of the ES4s. The outside is metallic, or at least this plate. I don't know if it's actually metal or just chrome looking plastic, but. And there again, we have a very similar uh, cord like you would see with the Shures. Cord on this is very nice. They're not interchangeable with the Shures because the connector portion is different. All right, so here's the uh, the heavyweights, big ones on the block. We have the Bose QC20s. Um, these are the only set here that is battery powered that, or that needs to be recharged. Uh, these do have active noise canceling. All the other ones are passive noise canceling, which means they're just going to block, you know, basically plug up your ear and therefore passively block sound out of there. So I am curious to see the longevity of this. This is clearly the most expensive set on the table. Is it worth it? I mean, if they work really well and they last a couple years, they're worth it. If they don't last a couple years, to me, they're not worth it. Because again, these were like 50 bucks, <laughs> something like that. Um, Buy them all then. Uh, one thing that I'm concerned about, not really concerned about, but maybe just curious as to what solution I'm gonna find with this, is that here's our connector. That's the connector to a connector going up there. So I think I'm probably gonna have to get an extension or I'm gonna try to figure out how to actually stuff this up into the helmet. I don't know if that's possible, you know, back behind the padding, maybe. But there again, you're also gonna to have to pull this out and recharge it. This is where the battery and everything is for these devices. So uh, it's probably gonna be the best answer to find a little, little, extension. Uh, this also looks like it has a TRRS cable, but again, the other thing that I do know is that some of these cables will work with both. will work with a TRS and a TRS, so maybe that's the case with this. We will see. Uh, USB-A type-A to a USB micro. Um, we do have some extra ear tips. Uh, you have a large and a small. The medium's already already installed in this. So that's what you get with the bows. All right, so those are the models that we're gonna be testing out. I'm sure many of you have some suggestions of some additional earbuds that you would like to see us test, maybe some other additional systems altogether. Please leave those in the comments below. Uh, we'd love to consider those and maybe possibly do that in a future video. But we're gonna test these. We're gonna try to simulate the, the same conditions as much as possible for each one of these. Um, 
the other thing, make sure you subscribe, you like, you comment, share. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to take these out. We're going to jump on the bike and uh, we're going to do some testing. We'll see you out there. All right, so that was a lot of fun and uh, a lot more work than anticipated, but we got it all done. Now, uh, we're gonna go through kind of our experiences and kind of show you our test rides real quick, but if you wanna jump right to the end, we have a very, very scientific graph model numeral <laughs> numeral <laughs> numeric rating uh that we put on this but uh no all joking aside uh again summer gave a number summer assigned a number to different categories i assigned a number to each of those categories we added it all up and it's at the very end of this video but if you want to follow along this is the first ride that uh summer and i took them on all right folks so now we're on our first test run doing highway speeds um i currently am wearing the sure 215s this is our first run uh, Summer, which ones are you wearing? I'm wearing the M, the Mies M6 Pros. Overall, a couple of things that I noticed. Number one, riding is just, to me, is much more enjoyable, especially on the highway. I'm hearing really no wind noise at all. Um, I don't feel for a second that I'm losing any real situational awareness with these. The seal on these is pretty good. They do have the comply comfort tips. Uh, so they, it's a more of a memory phone, so they seal up real nice. Uh, Summer, what's what's kind of your thoughts? I, I don't hear any wind noise at all. Um, music quality is good. I can hear you just fine through the comm system. Even the engine noise is pretty much completely reduced. So uh, as far as fit and feel in the ear, they feel pretty good. And uh, I think they have a pretty good seal on these too. All right, Summer, so uh, what did you think about the M6s? Uh, I liked them a lot. I thought they did a good job of canceling the uh, wind and road noise, and they were very comfortable in the ear, um, easy to put on, and worked well with the helmet. So overall, I really, really liked them. Uh, so the, the Shirt 215s, they sounded good. Uh, what I did have a problem with was this piece right here. This piece is supposed to kind of form, and it kind of does, but then it kind of bounces back. It, it's not, it doesn't fit tightly. Uh, so this kind of wiggled around a little bit more than, than I would like. Summer now has the Sure 215s on. I have the uh, Mi M6 Pros. One of the things I did notice right off the bat with the M6s is, is the fact that is the fact that the audio levels are quieter with the M6. And what I mean by that is um, I had my Cardo volume for music and um, set it at one level for the Sure 215s, and then I put the M6s on, uh, and I had to turn it up quite a bit to get to the same audio level. Kind well, I, I, had, I had the same experience in reverse with the 215, so I had, I had to uh, turn down the music substantially because it was super loud as soon as I plugged in the 215s, as well as the, the comms with you talking uh, was super loud, so there was that immediate difference right now between the two that we've tried so far some are like the m6 m6s um but it does the sure 215s and go ahead what were you saying i was just gonna say that's for sure all right summer so what do you think about the 215s so after wearing the the m6 i did not like the 215 nearly as much uh even though this is the more expensive version basically that's supposed to be the copycat the m6 is supposed to be the copycat uh the 215 the wire was much less user friendly for me yeah, uh, I did not fit behind the ear as well and it was not as easy to put on as the m6 pros um as far as music quality and comms quality probably about the same yeah no i after wearing those and then wearing these the second time i didn't realize what i was missing on those and, and how much better these really are because again to me really the, the big thing here is that this wire like fits over the ear and you can form fit it to your ear and it held it in place and it, it was firm these also were very comfortable with in the ear while you have your helmet on and taking the helmet off but very comfortable uh blocked out the wind noise the sound quality was good these were probably great for like a studio monitor and, and that's that's what they're designed for but these were really great for the motorcycle uh i love the fact they come with the extra cord uh just a lot of cool features i mean they're just they're really good i mean they're they really outperform their price point so that was pretty cool all right so this is not necessarily an order but i want to just go ahead and get these out of the way so this was the kz's es 10 pro and the kz es fours uh these were a no-go right off the bat so we're just we'll just let you know that folks when we put this on both of us ran into this issue we, we put it on 
down and put her helmet on and we could not get the helmet off. Uh, it was excruciating to finally pull that thing off because of the way that these lodge into your ear and because they stick out so far. You can get the helmet on, but getting it off, it feels like you're about to rip your ears, ear canals apart. I mean, it's just, it's, it's bad. So just had to fight through the pain. <laughs> yeah, you just, uh, <laughs> uh, these were a no-go and uh, do not recommend these for using under a motorcycle helmet in in, in in any circumstances whatsoever. Yeah. So we didn't even take these out for a ride because no. there was no use. No, couldn't do it. All right, so that covers that. All right, so for our final two test runs, we had the Bose QC twenties and the Cepheid. All right, so uh, Summer and I, we were just on the highway running the uh, Cepheid. They're the only conventional looking earbuds that, that we have, and I can tell you right now, a couple of issues that I'm seeing with these is number one, uh, they hurt. Um, they were mildly uncomfortable when I put them in and got the helmet on, and they just have become more and more annoying to the point of distracting. Um, they're also clearly bass boosted. Any sort of voice audio, whether it's you know listen to like you know a, a podcast or something like that, uh, or when Summer's talking to me or somebody's coming over the comp, it just sounds muddy. So I can't really understand what they're saying. The sound quality is not good. But again, these are like less than twenty dollars, so I don't know really what I was expecting out of this. Summer's running the Bose. Bose, those are clearly the, by far the most expensive. What's your thoughts so far, Summer? So right off the bat, um, turning on the active noise canceling was profound. There was a huge um, canceling of noise <laughs> from the wind and the bike. However, even at low speeds, I started noticing a popping noise uh, coming through the earbuds, and that right away was annoying to me. However, when we hit the highway and got up to higher speeds, it was constant popping uh just wanted to rip the things off my ears and, and throw them off the side of the road so to me paying 250 dollars for a pair of headphones that's going to have such a profound issue was a was a no-go for me the active noise canceling was nice but that for me that was the only um good feature on the bose uh, the other thing i didn't like was that the battery pack was uh, in line it seemed a little inconvenient in the placement and added a little bulk that i didn't like yeah, these uh, bows definitely reduced the Street Fighter down to a little purr. These reduce nothing. <laughs> these are I'm getting wind noise, bike noise. That's because the stereo is so good on those. It's like it's like surround sound. I don't have any music. Yeah, no, I know. It's actually pretty remarkable, I would say. The, the, yeah. It's actually better than what I thought it was going to be on the motorcycle. You know? So let's talk about uh, the Cepheus, Cepheus, whatever the heck those things are, which are basically conventional earbuds. Well, that's exactly uh, what they are, is conventional earbuds. And they are definitely the $15 earbuds that we paid $15 for. They are just that, earbuds. There is no... Um, noise mitigation, the wind noise is, is just like having nothing in. Engine noise, bike noise, road noise is all 100% there. And even the audio and voice quality coming through, it's just blah. All right, so as, as far as the Bose goes, uh, man, I, I just I just thought they were just the coolest things ever. Uh, number one, they're very comfortable. I really like these wingtips. They felt very comfortable on the helmet. But, you know, I was really geeking out over the active noise canceling. I mean, it is... I kept turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turn it off uh, before I even got on the bike. And then when you get on the bike, uh, man, it's just, it's it's pretty crazy. I do agree with Summer though, once you start getting up to speed, you do get that popping. I didn't find it as terrible or as bothersome as Summer did. The question here, this would be worth it to me and I could put up with a little bit of popping noise uh, because I do like the sound quality so much and I do like that active noise canceling so much. The question, 
to me would be, uh, you know, durability. How long is this going to last? How long is that 250 bucks going to last? Because that to me is the final question. But overall, I thought they were, I don't know, I was blown away by the technology. I think that's a lot of it. But, uh, you know, again, is it 250 bucks worth? I don't know. To me, I think it is. Uh, I would I would rock those. Um, Summer, she, she would live with the pain of the Cephas. No, but that no, is I'm fine. All right, so uh, we covered a lot. Now we need to get to our very scientific rating. So here we go. All right. So the way that we did this, uh, this was kind of a, just developed as we went along. But basically, we were going to do five, uh, a rating out of five. Uh, Summer and I each contributed to that rating. So you get an equal... A total of 10 per category right so the me m6 pros uh cancel when when canceling the noise canceling was 10 comfort near nine helmet friendly eight uh music sound quality nine comp sound quality nine price for features 10 with a total score of 64 out of 70. folks i'm telling you right now the m6 pros are just i mean they're they're great I, uh they are really if they were three times the price they were 150 dollar earbuds i would say that they would still be worth it so uh really great earbud period but for the money they're really really great uh the search 215s uh you see the scores there the cumulative scores 45 out of 70 go with the m6 pros leave leave those other ones you know again i think objectively the m6 pros at half the price are better than the surers under any circumstances but definitely for a motorcycle uh es4s leave them in the garbage leave them at home leave them at amazon just uh, same thing with the ZS10s. They're not made for motorcycle helmets. They're not going to be compatible with any motorcycle helmet that I could ever imagine wearing. So uh, not a fan of those. Unless you want to rip your ears off. Unless you want to rip your ears off. Very <laughs> painful. Uh, the Cepheus, again, 24 out of 70. I think that says it all. The Bose QC20s, we got a total of 50 out of 70. For me, they just weren't worth $250. Yeah, and, and ultimately, they're probably not. But again, some novelty there that... I, again, that, I'm telling you folks, that active noise canceling is pretty amazing. It is profound. Uh, with all these subjective numbers out of the way, ultimately, what was your favorite, Summer? The M6 Pros. And I would say, you know, it's a toss up. I'm kind of even between the Bose and the M6s. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of novelty there. I really like those. I think it's super cool with that, that active noise canceling. Anyways, we really appreciate you watching. Uh, if there is, if there's anything you want to add down in the comments, make sure you do so. We'd love to hear it. If there's some other earbud that you're using or you would like to see us test and compare against, you know, whatever's out there. Uh, we're going to do a lot more tests like this, what, both on earbuds and a bunch of other gear that we have planned coming up. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Summer's got some different stuff that she wants to do as far as some videos, some workout videos, some recipes. Uh, we're going to keep a lot of cool and kind of diverse, 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 eclectic, eclectic diverse activities, eclectic, 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 eclectic. <laughs> <laughs> all right so anyways thanks for watching make sure you subscribe like comment down below make sure you share this we really appreciate it but until next time make sure you're safe god bless you guys and uh, we'll see you again soon